Uh, my name is Jeff Yeagley. I'll be the moderator for this webinar uh, with Compass IT Compliance. Thank you to everyone for joining us this, this afternoon and this morning for anybody that might be located uh, outside of the Eastern uh, Standard Time Zone. So uh, today's topic is going to be on the recent changes that were actually re released today uh, to the PCI Data Security Standards version 3.2. Um, there's some significant changes that have been released. So Derek Rosanowski with Compass IT Compliance is going to be our presenter today. Uh, for those of you folks who have attended previous webinars, you're very familiar with Derek as he does quite a few of our webinars and does an awesome job. Uh, Derek is one of our senior IT auditors as well as a qualified security assessor through the PCI Security Standards Council. So there's a lot of great knowledge around PCI compliance and these changes. Uh, so he'll be able to take us through. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask at the end of the presentation, there's a chat button on the bottom of your screen. Please direct them to me, uh, Jeff Yeagley, uh, with a G, so don't look for a J. Uh, and we can answer those as time permits at the end. Uh, so without further ado, I will turn the presentation over to Derek to go through the changes to PCI DSS 3.2. Go ahead, Derek. Thank you very much, Jeff, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. As Jeff said, uh, this webinar is to discuss the changes made to uh, PCI uh, version 3.2 that were just made live today. So up until about 11 o'clock this morning, I was working off a draft copy of, uh, of the changes that had come through. Fortunately, uh, there really isn't any difference between the draft copy and the final copy. So. With any luck, the information I give you is will still be valid uh, when uh, when you guys are actually reading through the uh, the several hundred pages, as I'm sure you'll all go through at the end of this webinar. So, without further ado, um, let's uh, let's get going. So, uh, quick uh, quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to do a little PCI DSS overview. We're going to talk about why uh, there have been changes made to the standard. A little bit about uh, what has changed. We're not going to go into everything, but the uh, in terms of the major changes that have been uh, put forth, we'll uh, we'll touch briefly on hopefully each one of those. Um, we'll go over important time frames and deadlines, and uh, and then a quick review. If there's any time left, we'll uh, we'll do some uh, Q and A at the end of the session. So PCI. Uh, I won't go exactly into, into all the details about what it is and, and how it works, but uh, those of you who are new to PCI or getting started with the process, it's an industry standard that was developed by uh, the five major card brands, including Visa and MasterCard, Discover, American Express, and, and JCD. It's been around a lot longer than most people think. PCI, the first version, was released back in 2004. Um, and, uh, and then basically uh, the, the next version came out six years later in 2010. So there was quite a gap in between one and two and a lot of changes between standard one and standard two. Uh, PCI standard three was released in November of 2013 and 3.1 is released in April of 2015. So taking a look at these slides, you can see as the standard has grown, and, uh, and as they've added things and gone through things, um, there are slightly more incremental changes to the standard instead of wholesale bootstrap changes. But they're coming out a little more frequently than they did before. So why? Why are they coming out more frequently than they did before? Well, at this point, uh, the PCI Council considers uh, uh, the PCI DSS standard as a mature standard. But what they're basically saying is we've got the groundwork down. We have a pretty good idea on, on everything that's set and, and we're, we're good in it. We may need to make minor incremental changes going forward, but we don't see a huge difference or, or huge changes coming down the pike very quickly. That's one of the reasons that uh, 3.0 became 3.1 and 3.1 has become 3.2. Uh, the changes are occurring because of feedback from the community, people like you. Uh, and, uh, and as they go through the PCI process and they try and become PCI compliant, they have a lot of comments, concerns, 
uh, angry letters, bomb threats, things like that, that uh, the PCI community takes a look at and makes changes accordingly. Uh, changing threats. Uh, everybody knows that the landscape for IT security in general never remains constant. Uh, and, uh, and as things, uh, new threats to security come up and old security measures become obsolete, PCI tries to make changes within that framework to make sure that these are addressed as well. And then attacking trends. Uh, a very good example of this one is that obviously with EMV going forward, uh, part of the purpose of using EMV is to mitigate the risk of compromised cards at the, uh, at the POS stations. So right now we're actually seeing a much bigger increase of skimming attacks and uh, attacks of that nature because uh, EMV should be coming along very, very quickly to help mitigate that. So we're actually anticipating a lot more online and card not present attacks coming down the pipe. PCI reviews these and takes a look and tries to respond accordingly and see, sees if there's anything in their standard that needs to be adjusted based on attack trends. So, what has changed? Um, there are three types of changes that the PCI standard usually makes. The first is clarifications. Now, clarifications basically, uh, there's no change to the requirement, but it changes, it, it clarifies something that's already been a requirement out there. So, the wording might not have been precise. Uh, they, they might have, you know, uh, made something consistent across several different uh, um, requirements, and uh, basically they've, they've cleaned up what was out there because someone was complaining about something or something might have been ambiguous. So 47 clarifications in total. Some of these include, you know, removing a single word or changing a sentence. Uh, so we're not going to go through all 47 changes. Don't worry about that. But just so you know, the clarifications cover all 12 disciplines except for requirement number five, which is basically antivirus, probably one of the most mature areas of the PCI standard at this point. Um, additional guidance is the second type of change. Additional guidance really is uh, more of an explanation, more of a definition, uh, more of an instruction, so that people reading these requirements and trying to adhere to them have a better understanding and uh, it, it's an attempt to provide further information or guidance. So how you might want to test the control or what PCI DSS is looking for in this requirement. And then a third area, and this is the big one, is what's called evolving requirements. I'm sorry, in terms of additional guidance, there were a couple of pieces of additional guidance, um, two general pieces and one for requirement 12.8.2. So for evolving requirements, this is kind of the big one. This is the one that everybody takes a look at. And an evolving requirement is actually change to either an existing requirement or an enhancement, or in some cases, a creation of a new, uh, I'll say, sub-requirement. Uh, normally, they don't come out with a new major requirement, but in a lot of cases, what they'll do is they'll, they'll put a sub-requirement in or move some of the requirements around. And really, it, it, again, it's a change to ensure that the standards are up to date, with some of the threats and the changes in the market that we discussed on the last slide. So in this one, there were eight evolving requirements in, in PCI version 3.2. So as I said before, one is an update, but seven are brand new. Or in this case, uh, a couple of them have been mentioned in other requirements, but they've been split off and enhanced in this case. So out of these changes, what has changed? Well, the biggest change that is, uh, that, that is coming along is the migration dates. When do these have to be uh, in place by? And we'll go through that a little bit, but those of you who have gone through a 3.1 assessment are familiar with some of the, uh, some of the controls that were due to be in, uh, implemented at, uh, in the summer of 2016. Uh, most notably, the uh, the encryption standards. Some of those are going to be changed and actually will not come. The requirement has been pushed out until 2018 on these. I'll go into a little bit more detail later, 
It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have these done. Uh, the 2018 is a drop dead date. And as we go through these requirements, you'll actually see that you're kind of going to want to start looking at these now, because if you wait until uh, mid, mid of next year, you're not going to be able to meet some of these requirements. Uh, the pan display, we'll talk about that a little bit. They provided some additional guidance on that and what you can and cannot see. Um, uh, Multi-factor authentication and, uh, and BAU requirements are, are the other ones that are out there. So although I don't have specific slides, we're going to go through some of these and take a look at the ones that are actually uh, evolving on requirements. So for example, the, the PAN requirement that we had discussed uh, on the last slide, uh, it's uh, requirement 3.3. .3, and basically, it's an updated requirement that clarifies any displays of PAN greater than the first six or last four needs a business need. Now, up until this requirement, it was you cannot display any digits other than the first six or the last four digits of the PAN. This requirement is saying, well, you can, but there has to be a legitimate business need. And it also gives a little bit of guidance on masking some of the scenarios that are out there. Um, one of the other requirements is a new requirement for change control process to re include verification of, a, of uh, you know, any changes to the PCI environment. So in a nutshell for that one, when we're taking a look at that, we have to be careful because Everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody, many people have a change management process in place today. However, the change management process doesn't always take into account, if we're making this change, how does it affect PCI? So they're putting some guidance in on those. Um, one of the things to make note of is these evolving requirements are all effective as of February 1st, 2018. You're gonna start seeing them much earlier, if someone comes out to do a rock or a risk assessment, uh, and they can start using 3.2 right now. Uh, 3.1 will be sunset a little bit sooner, uh, and we'll get into that as well. But uh, 3.2 is considered live. You'll see in the requirements, these evolving requirements are not required. They're what's considered a best practice, but they will be required as of February 1st, 2018. So, the all versions of the SSL and early TLS that we're sitting on here extend to June 30th, 2018. The reason this gets a slide all by itself, this is a very important issue that was actually brought up in PCI 3.1. And the original date was June 30th of 2016. Got enough pushback that uh, people realized they weren't going to be able to meet this requirement as of June 30th of 2016, and the council extended it to 2018. However, it's very important to note that does not mean that the council says you can sit on your hands until 2018. Uh, moving away from uh, SSL and TLS 1.0 is still a requirement. And if you're still running those in your environment, you're going to be expected to, under, you know, to have a migration plan in place. Uh, any QSA coming in and doing a ROC or a risk assessment is gonna ask you if you have this in, in your environment. And if you do have it, what's your plan to migrate off it? So the pan display, as we discussed, it's a flexibility to, to display more than the last four or six numbers. It's based on business need, and uh, they did it, it, it did it in conjunction with the ISO 7812 standard. BAU, and I'm sorry I didn't talk about BAU on the earlier slide. BAU stands for business as usual. So business as usual requirements, this is kind of a, these are a couple of new controls that are in here. So the first one is penetration testing on segmentation controls. Now, many of you know what a penetration test is. They do external penetration tests and internal penetration tests. You guys are segmenting your network, which basically means you're taking your PCI environment and you're moving it outside uh, of the rest of your network so that you're segmented off. The PCI requirement was to test those controls annually. PCI has changed this so that you have to test these controls every six months. Right now, it's for service providers only. However, it certainly is a best practice for merchants, and I wouldn't be surprised if this control was expanded into 
uh, all merchants and all users very, very soon. Um, the other one was a quarterly confirmation of employee compliance with security policies and procedures. Now this one is a new one. PCI has acknowledged that when you do a ROC or a PCI risk assessment, it's a point in time assessment. And everybody kind of signs up for these and they understand and they know when you're coming in. So you'll have the security awareness ready. Uh, you've gone through your accounts, you've gone through your security in an attempt to make sure that you're compliant for all these. They've also noticed that if they were to come in 90 days after these assessments, many of you would be out of compliance again for one reason or another. So what PCI has done is they have said, okay, we guys want you to confirm your controls that are out there and the compliance with security policies and procedures every quarter. Just like they're doing quarterly vulnerability scans within your environment, they want to make sure that you guys are listening to, uh, you know, basically monitoring your own environment going forward. So if you're compliant as of January 1st, come June 30th, or even in this case, since it's quarterly, come even April 1st, and then June, you know, July 1st, and, and October 1st, you, they want to make sure that you remain compliant before your next assessment comes in. You're doing a self-assessment of your controls. Multi-factor authentication. This one's a big one. So they changed, uh, they, they changed from calling two-factor authentication to multi-factor authentication. That's verbiage more than anything else. Most people understand what two-factor authentication is at this point. Um, those of you who don't, it's something you are, uh, something you have, something you know. Something you know is a password, for example. Something you are could be a fingerprint. Uh, something you know, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, something you know is a password. Something you have could be like a token access. PCI has required that vendors and remote access into the cardholder data environment use multi-factor authentication. That's old news. And it's one of the requirements that seems to give people a lot of trouble in some cases. Well, they've expanded this requirement. And it's now required for all administrators, even within the network. So if you're sitting in your own network, if you have to get into uh, uh, servers on the CDE, which is cardholder data environment, for example, they're going to want admins to start using multi-factor authentication to be able to access that. Now again, this is a best practice until February 1st of 2018. But think about it, we're already about midway, we're coming close to midway in 2016. So that's about a year and a half, a little bit more than a year and a half, year and three quarters maybe, we'll be generous. So in that time, if you don't have a multi-factor authentication system in place, number one, you need to research, and get budgeted and implement and have one in there. You do have one, you have to, and, but it's only used for say VPN access for external vendors or, or external admins who are working from home. You have to figure out how to tie it into your internal process and have all the policies and procedures around that as well. That's why they're giving you this much time to make it a requirement versus having it just be a best practice. The reason they're doing this is that uh, their continued attacks and weak passwords, once the admin credentials are grabbed, you have the keys to the kingdom within a CDE environment, within any environment, actually. Uh, there are a lot of tales. What, what attackers like more than anything else is being able to get those admin credentials because then you can shut off most of the other monitoring and alerting tools that would go on and let people know they're there. So... The council's point of view is that if you're using multi-factor authentication, even if you got the credentials for an admin user, you wouldn't be able to log on without having that second factor, be it a, a certificate or a token or a biometric, whatever it may be. Bear in mind, you don't have to use what you're using on the outside to get in as you are on the inside, but it has to be a multi-factor authenticated uh, access. So what are the time frames? Well, congratulations. Today, PCI DSS 3.2 is released. I just got the email. 
in, in my uh, inbox at about 11 o'clock this morning. Took a look at the standard. October 2016. Well, PCI DSS 3.1 is retired. So if any of you are in the middle of a DSS, PCI DSS assessment right now, they should be, hopefully, they're using 3.1. Starting today, they can use 3.2 if they want. You can use 3.1 through October of 2016. After that, you must use 3.2 as the assessment. Uh, February 2018 is when the 3.2 requirements take effect. You take a look at the uh, uh, guidance on 3.2. All the evolving requirements, all the new requirements say that they are best practices until February of 2018. After that point, then they become requirements. This gives you the time to take a look at these now, and you really should, to see what changes you need to make to your environment. Uh, when I was taking a look at the evolving requirements, there's some work that needs to be done. Internally, certainly for the dual uh, multi-factor authentication, which if I call it dual factor, excuse me, because I've been doing it for years and years, but there's a lot of policy and procedure, I would say, in regards to making sure uh, change control is taken in, in PCI changes into account. If you make a change, how does it affect PCI? The quarterly assessment to make sure that you're actually adhering to your own PCI controls. Uh, people who have tried to implement things like this know how much work it is. So it's something you want to look at now to have, uh, to have a plan of attack so that you guys can implement it next year so that by the time February 2018 rolls around, you're all set and ready to go. And then finally, June of 2018, the migration away from SSL and early TLS must be completed. Again, and I can't stress this enough, that does not mean that you can just go ahead and use them until June 2018 and turn them off. Uh, QSAs and, and people who are doing PCI assessments should be asking you, it should be one of the first questions they ask is, are you using SSL? Are you using TLS 1.0? If the answer is yes in your environment, they should ask for your mitigation plan. What are you doing to get off it? In this case, you know, in a lot of cases, you have third-party vendors that are using these technologies. You may be at their mercy, so, but you want to be asking what their plans are so that you can know and, and let your QSAs and let the people doing your assessments know what the plan is to migrate off of this. So where did I get all this fun information? Uh, well, most of it comes from the PCI Security Standards Council website, which is here. Um, the PCI Document Library, which will give you uh, the, the full several hundred pages of, of guidance on every single one of these controls. Uh, Visa Security and Compliance will give you a lot of good information about this, and then MasterCard Security and Compliance will as well. Um, PCI does not try and hide standards from you or try and keep information. It is all out there, and they will talk ad nauseum on it. Um, they are, there are already several documents out there that detail what the changes are, what the classifications are, what the evolving requirements are. Uh, there are some general ones. But uh, many of them are specific and coming very, very quickly. As someone who uh, became a QSA a couple of years ago, when 2.0 was becoming 3.0, I can tell you that uh, keeping up with some of the changes can be daunting. So uh, again, as Jeff said, my name is Derek Bozanowski. Um, I'm a secu senior security analyst for Compass IT Compliance. Um, I'm also a qualified security assessor in PSI uh, and, uh, and a certified, uh, certified information systems auditor. My apologies for tripping over my own tongue. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, to take these slides and, and write us directly. You can contact me. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, and, of course, Jeff is also available uh, from, uh, from the sales side of the world. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Great, thanks, Eric. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, thank you to everyone for joining today. We have one question that came in. Uh, if anybody has any other questions, they can feel free again to either send them through the chat function at the bottom uh, or send over a quick email, whichever is preferable. Uh, again, we will be sending out a copy of the presentation and the recording to everybody who registered for the webinar, uh, so you guys will have those um, the slides as well as 
that are uh, talking through the slides as well. Uh, Derek, one question that came in is, we know that you talked about this being a best practice at this point in time and, and taking effect uh, in 2018. What can organizations do to start really preparing for these different pieces? Should they be uh, implementing these different controls and requirements now? Uh, we know sooner, sooner rather than later is obviously better, but how quickly do they need to jump on this? Well, it's, it, it's, it does kind of depend on the control a little bit, but a lot of them do involve uh, a fair amount of work. And in some cases, if you don't have them implemented, uh, and I'm thinking specifically about the uh, multi-factor authentication for direct login into the CDE, that one may require budget changes depending on how you want to implement them. There are some ways to use multi-factor that do not require budget, but they also have to be researched and, and thought out and, and you know, to make sure that they are working correctly. Um, uh, an old try and tr tried and true method it can be having, you know, using certificates and, and TACAC servers and things like that. But again, you want to make sure it's truly multi-factor. So if it's someone actually is sitting on your machine and it's compromised your password, that they're not able to get into the CDE with that. So uh, my recommendation is take a look at the evolving requirements now. There are some, I would say, that, uh, you know, you want to start meeting about and saying, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to handle it? If you wait until June of 2017, because you're saying, hey, you know, we're on a fiscal year, we don't have to worry about that, you're really, you, you have the chance to be behind the eight ball if you're not careful where that's concerned. I would start taking a look at, at the requirements today, seeing anything that, that you can enhance in your environment. Again, a lot of it is, is procedural, and those things may not cost a lot of money, but it may be uh, getting approval from senior management or board of directors or uh, operations departments on how they work on things to be able to do this. So many of these requirements, I would say, would take several months to implement effectively if they aren't already in there. So being, uh, being just at the end of April right now of 2016, I would say start doing what you can right now. And, uh, and by 20, I would say if you can have them implemented by mid-2017, then you can cross them right off your list and say, well, I don't have to worry about this because it's a best practice until 2018. Gotcha. Makes sense. So you're saying sooner rather than later would be a good, good methodology to implement. Correct. All right. Awesome. You've done a great job, Derek, because that is the only question that we have. So again, I just want to thank everybody for taking some time out uh, of their day um, to attend the webinar. I know that the uh, actual official release just took place uh, this morning, uh, as Derek alluded to. So a lot of this is new information. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Derek or myself. Uh, also, you can visit the PCI Security Standards Council website. And uh, again, we just thank you all for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you next month for our May webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.